There are multiple reasons why Thrones fans who were disappointed with the show's conclusion can be enthusiastic for HBO's next act of fire and blood. Fans of Game of Thrones, despite its flaws, are in for a treat. What about fans who were never enticed into Westeros? House is a prequel that has little resemblance to the original series. Regardless of your stance, here's everything you need to know before visiting the House of the Dragon. What we must first know about the next monarch. Depending on how you felt about the show overall, the following may be good or terrible news. House of the Dragon does not include Game of Thrones executive producers and founders David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. Instead, showrunners Ryan J. Condal and Miguel Sapochnik created Dragon, with series co-creator Martin acting as an active executive producer. Condal and Sapochnik bring excellent credentials to HBO's first Thrones successor, at least the first to screen. Sapochnik directed some of Game of Thrones' most acclaimed episodes, including the war movie-style Battle of the Bastards and the season 6 conclusion, The Winds of Winter. Both episodes were bombastic, but they were also profoundly entrenched in people's points of view, filled with amazing thematic imagery, such as snowfall in Westeros signifying the coming of the much-anticipated winter. Sapochnik appears here as one of the most accomplished filmmakers Westeros has ever known, with other important credits including an episode of Netflix's big-budget Altered Carbon. The second showrunner for House of the Dragon enters with the permission of Westeros' one true king, George R. R. Martin himself, who chose Condal for the role. Condal, a major admirer of the Song of Ice and Fire novel series, has an intimate book loyalist's viewpoint and a declared intention to carefully follow Martin's well-written storyline. Consider Condal and Carlton Cuse's sadly short-lived and underappreciated USA Network sci-fi series Colony about humanity's battle to survive an alien-occupied Earth. Moving on, The Dragon's Book. Condal's passion for the printed Westeros word may be amusing to some, giving the local running joke. Martin's books are still unfinished, with The Winds of Winter, the sixth and penultimate book in the Ice and Fire epic, yet to be released. Of course, the author insists he's still working on it, and one recent update paints a fairly optimistic picture of the book's chances. These future wins, however, are unimportant in the case of The House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon, on the other hand, is based on a separate book, Martin's epic imagined history of the Targaryen kings, told through the eyes of a Westeros maester. Fire and Blood, the first book in a projected duology, stop laughing, follows the success of several dragon-riding monarchs in Westeros. It tells detailed stories about each of them with little dialogue, leaving plenty of room for exploring between the bullet points. Whereas Thrones has a fully paved road up to a cliff, Condal and Sapochnik have almost the opposite option. They know the House of the Dragon route's beginning and ending points. However, because Fire and Blood is a history book told by an untrustworthy narrator and sources, the showrunners can select which milestones to stress and embellish and some to ignore outright. House of the Dragon is based on bits of a completed book, so spoilers arise while discussing this material. If you wish to watch the series without knowing what happens to the characters, use extreme caution when searching. Following that, a question of succession. What is the House of the Dragon about, aside from the Targaryen concept? You can read Fire and Blood to find out, but you won't get an answer immediately. House of the Dragon's first few pages is an adaptation of Fire and Blood. Prospective viewers who read the book before seeing the show may be dismayed to realize that the first few hundred pages, which detail Aegon's conquest and his two immediate successors, aren't the show's focus and may not be shown at all. However, the powers that be have hinted that in future seasons, House of the Dragon may become an anthology series, allowing viewers to delve into the stories of other Targaryens. House of the Dragon, on the other hand, focuses on the middle section of Fire and Blood, beginning with the tail end of the fourth Targaryen monarch's long and tranquil reign. Jaehaerys the Wise, despite a remarkable career spanning more than 50 years, confronts tremendous emotional and practical problems when naming an heir. Without a clear path forward, he outsourced voting for Westeros' next ruler to a council, resulting in the House of the Dragon's King Viserys' ascent. Despite bearing the name of the Game of Thrones' first season's golden-crowned Targaryen, this Viserys is a far cry from that character in disposition. Nonetheless, his ascendancy alienates others, 
Guiding us directly into the House of the Dragon, Viserys faces the same challenge as his predecessor as his reign progresses. Succession, who will take his place on the Iron Throne? Next, what do we truly need to understand about the characters? House of the Dragon offers a rich range of characters for viewers to root for and against, focusing on King's Landing and the political operators therein. Viserys' brother, Daemon, Matt Smith, is a warmongering warrior with a chip on his shoulder. Viserys' beloved daughter, Rhaenyra, played by Millie Alcock in her early years. This is before the role is handed over to Emma Darcy as the adult version of the character. She is a young princess who many believe should be the next ruler of Westeros. For the time being, the less that is said about her critical role, the better. Nonetheless, the fact that the two distinct performers represent two distinct roles should tell something very important. House of the Dragon tells a decades-long story, fueling the action with years and years of major and petty grievances. It's a significant departure from Thrones, which told its story over a relatively short period, despite the rapid growth of Bran Stark. Put it another way, many of your favorite characters will perish. However, some of your favorite performers will fade from view as they age out of the plot. Varys, Daemon, Rhaenyra, and Alicent are well-known core four, although the story extends well beyond their realm. For example, Steve Toussaint plays Lord Corlys Valerian, the Sea Snake, the greatest sailor Westeros has ever known, and a Targaryen descendant like the Targaryens. Following that, a word of warning. Prospective Queen Daenerys planned to break the wheel in her quest for the Iron Throne. That did not quite work out. HBO, on the other hand, is keeping to an adage, if the wheel isn't broken, don't fix it. To put it another way, House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones share numerous similarities aside from sharing the same universe. Well, the White Walkers aren't a pressing threat here, but were they on Game of Thrones? The King's Landing scheming that defined Benioff and Weiss's show in its early seasons is very much the bread and butter here on House of the Dragon. The extended arcs are also comparable in terms of the thematic engines revving beneath the protagonist's opposing objectives and physical set pieces, incorporating familiar iconography and degrees of damage. Another way House of the Dragon will most likely resemble Game of Thrones is with extremely horrific content. While some connected with the show swear it will not depict explicit sexual violence, many other forms of trauma are unavoidable. Grooming, incest, structural oppression, and the normal levels of violence in this world. Viewers are encouraged to continue with caution. What about incidents on the scale of the Red Wedding? House of the Dragon has enough of them, including at least one or two that will make Rob Stark's demise look like a tea party. Finally, what kind of adventures will we find in the Tales of Dunk and Egg, The Hedge Knight? Martin's books can serve as a roadmap for those interested in the upcoming Game of Thrones television series. Ninety years before the events of Game of Thrones, the novella's Tales of Dunk and Egg take place. Dunk, Sir Duncan the Tall, a poor knight who would one day become Lord Commander of the King's Guard, and Egg, his squire, are the heroes of this book, the future King Aegon v Targaryen. Dunk and Egg wander the enormous landscape, fighting in tournaments for their daily bread, and regularly coming across historical events as Westeros recovers from the Blackfyre Rebellion, which pitted Targaryen against Targaryen in a horrific war from the Iron Throne. In the first novella in the series, The Hedge Knight, Dunk and Egg are brought together for the first time at a disastrous jousting tournament. Dunk and Egg are drawn into a conflict between local nobles and peasants in the Sworn Sword. Dunk and Egg investigate an assassination plot in the Mystery Knight, which features cameos from well-known figures like Walder Frey and Baron Stark. Like with The Winds of Winter, Martin had wanted to write 7 to 12 Tales of Dunk and Egg entries, but his plans fell through. Martin previously claimed that an adaptation of The Tales of Dunk and Egg would not be approved until he finishes all the episodes, but his plans have changed. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you liked it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.